Hi guys, we are here today with Adreno team members Marcel, Reese, and Wayne. Uh, we are going to have a quick chat about the coral sea trip they've just returned from. Adreno does a few coral sea trips a year, and next year we've also got, uh, in addition to coral sea trips, we've got some spearfishing trips to Tonga. Uh, so if you're looking to join an expedition, you can watch this and get a bit of an insight into what these trips look like. So we might start off with introducing uh, Wayne, Reese, and Marcel. Uh, so Wayne, tell us a bit about how long you've been with Adreno and, and your role here with the company. I look after the spearfishing, the on the display for spearfishing side of things. I've uh, been here three years now. And, uh, I came winter three years ago when mm -hmm. nobody was hiring staff, but thank heavens I've made a little bit of a name for myself. And Robbie, who was general manager at the time, said, yeah, I think we're going to have a go with this. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's been a good, uh, 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 good time for all of us, I think. Cool. And uh, what's your spearfishing history and your spearfishing background? Tell us a bit about that. I spent 20, I've done 20 years spearfishing and I did uh, most of it in Sydney at you know, 12 years, which included five coral sea trips uh, up to the, um, the reefs off uh, Gladstone, Wreck, Ken, Frederick, Sumerez and the Swains when we got chased back by a storm. Mm. So it was. Um, then I moved to Gladstone and getting to Gladstone was like you know, a kid in a lolly store after Sydney. You got, you know, your snapper and your jewfish and your kingfish in Sydney, but uh, everything else is not quite up there. But when you move into the tropics, you've got such awesome fish. And yeah. So uh, five years up there and then three years down here in Brisbane. Cool, awesome. We'll definitely uh, be good to get your insights on how this trip compared then. Uh, and Reese, tell us about your history with Adreno. Um, started here two years ago. Uh, was in the warehouse, I started off and then kind of moved my way to the shop floor and then up into customer service now. Um, so when people call up for spear fishing, they want to talk to you? They are. <laughs> talk to me, they talk to me on live chat, emails. Yeah. I'm there. Um, Tell us a bit about your uh, history of spear fishing. I started spearing about eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Probably start off with a hand spear, mm -hmm. as you do. Uh, I was down at Coffs Harbour. And I stayed there until I moved to Brisbane and changed the atmosphere of everything. Mm -hmm. um, the diving up here is a lot different to down there. A lot more species to kind of remember and a bit more harder diving. Yeah. Uh, that's about it. Yeah. You've done a couple of reef trips? I've done one with Travis Hogan on my 21st birthday. And then that was out of Cairns for two days. Mm -hmm. And then this one. Cool. Awesome. And Marcel, uh, tell us a bit about your history with Adreno. I've been here at Adreno for about a year, working in marking here. Um, I've been spearfishing for only just over that, maybe a year and a half, um, and pretty much all of my diving has been shore dives around the coast here. Yeah. So lots of swimming and lots of hard work. <laughs> lots of sweet lip. <laughs> lots of sweet lip, yeah. Uh, so this then, I guess a lot of shore diving, so this was... I guess your first boat dive. Yeah, first yeah. boat dive, so yeah. big change. Yeah, straight to the top, um, straight to the pinnacle of Australian diving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Awesome. Um, and Wayne, uh, can you give us a bit of an overview of, I guess, what 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 do these trips look like? You know, what's the itinerary? What's the general layout? Um, and then we'll touch a bit, I guess, on how that compares to some of the other ones you've done. Yep. So the beauty about these spear fishing trips is that uh, you don't have to outlay or gather money from your friends to pay the deposit. And so uh, my earlier trips had a similar thing where a shop did actually work the deposit and then handled it from there. This is uh, very helpful because you know you pay your amount of money, you don't have to come up with 30,000 or something like that mm -hmm. between a group of years and uh, you just get to the boat on the time, and that's it. You arrange your flight so you get by. I like to get a, a, a day early just in case luggage doesn't get there. Mm. It's never happened to me, but I've always been a bit uh, on the careful side. Mm -hmm. This time, I got there on the morning, the luggage came with us, it was no problem. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, because you're carrying a fair bit of gear, you know, we all carry three three guns and fins and lines, etc., etc. So it's a, a quite a bit of gear. Yeah. Uh, the good thing about these trips is that. You don't have to think about food. You don't have to think about making it. You just have to think about having the energy to get out there day after day after day and do your diving. Oh, it sounds like a hard task, man. <laughs> well, interesting enough, 
it is hard work. Yeah. Because you think about six hours in the water and you're trying to get the best fish you can for the area. And this is, a, you know, you're paying for a, 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 to, to be able to get those fish. Mm. And so if you sort of took it easy, you may miss out on some opportunity. So we're all out there trying to get it, you know, as much time in as possible. And I had one afternoon off in those five days. Mm. Uh, it was, you know, I needed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I needed it. It was tough going. Yeah. Know? So tell us a bit, um, a bit about what happens, I guess, from the time you guys rock up on the, um, the kind of, Sunday, and then what what happens from there? You load the boat, and how's it all go? Well, I was lucky because Reese handled all the when the bus was going to arrive and things like that. So I just whilst up with my gear. So thanks, Reese. <laughs> so the shuttle bus from Cairns, flew into Cairns, shuttle bus to Port Douglas that Adreno organises. Yep. Um, and then what happens? Uh, from there, we went to the boat, uh, went and had a kind of induction with Peter. And um, introduced us to his crew and gave us a rundown on the do's and don'ts and the rules and what to expect and what's going to happen and what the weather's looking like. And then we had about, oh, what was it, about six hours, seven hours until we left. So mm -hmm. we went and had dinner at the, one of the um, restaurants just on the jetty there. Mm -hmm. Went to Coles, got the essentials of whatever you wanted to take that wasn't on the boat, alcohol. Um, chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> Gatorade. Um, and then from there we took the long journey out and most of us went to bed. How long does it take to get out there? Um, I tried to stay awake the whole trip but I ended up falling asleep about 3 in the morning mm -hmm. and we still weren't there. We mm -hmm. left at 9 so I think we got to Ribbons Reef at about 4.35 o'clock in the morning. Wow, yeah. So, so you pretty much trip. steam out and you wake up on the, the Monday up. morning and you're on the reef. Wake up on the reef. And then you just get up and have breakfast and they pretty much just start your day, get ready, go out. Ready to dive. Ready to dive. Cool. Um, Marcel, how did you find that first day on the reef? I guess being your, your first kind of boat dive, first reef experience. Tell us a bit about it. So the biggest thing that, well the biggest change for me was probably just diving in super clear blue water. Yeah. Coming from shore diving in like 5, 10 <laughs> metres viz most of the time, you can barely see your fins, to 30, 40 metres viz. Um, it was a big change and the difference between sitting on top of the reef and looking like it's kind of four or five meters deep and swimming down and realizing that it's 15 20 meters deep takes a little bit of adjusting to get used to and the same with um shooting fish and judging the perceived distance between you and the fish yeah. takes a little bit of adjusting but the whole process of going out there getting on a boat and then going directly to the spot that you're spearing and just jumping over the boat is just so easy yeah so yeah that was the best thing yeah yeah Awesome. And uh, Judge, how did, I guess, the diving on, um, on the, the NV Phoenix with Bianca Charters, how did that compare to some of your diving experiences and charter experiences particularly? Bianca Tours, I think, are a really good uh, um, provider. Captain, he's the, the one that impressed me most. He Captain was, Pete? Captain <laughs> Peter, yeah. He was always wanting dialogue with the guys what it was about so mm. we didn't make any decision that wasn't talked around the table and not just with Reese and I I made sure and he made sure we we're all part of the decision making so he came to the table with uh, what the weather was doing where it was doing it and you know it was unfortunate we didn't get out to the Coral Sea this time but kind of thankful we didn't because mm. we didn't have a huge experience crew and the weather went from 25 knots to 40 knots wind during the time we were out there. So we probably you know, just did the right thing. He was the one that was you know, presenting the data there. If we mm. had gone out there and got caught in 40 knot winds, it could have been pretty hard on us. You know? mm -hmm. And I guess the good thing with, with Captain Peters is that he runs these spearfishing charters all year. So he knows that even if you've got that weather and you need to go and hide and tuck behind a reef, he still knows where the fish are and where to find them. So I think that's the good thing we've found with um, with going with someone who's such an experienced operator and not just, not just a line fishing operation or something. They're very specialised. So yeah, that's definitely a good crew to go with. Um, what were some of your, and we're good to just hear from all of you, I guess, yeah, what were some of your favourite things about the trip and your biggest takeaways? My favourite thing was the bunch of guys we had on the trip. Just a really good bunch of guys. Yeah. Just, everyone was helping each other. People were willing to work as a team. There was no 
body just doing self, 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 you know, and uh, that made it, it good for everybody. Mm. Tell us a little bit about that, that working as a team in the Coral Sea. I know when I've been, it is, it is such a team effort thing. It's never, you, you don't ever swim off by yourself. So tell us a bit about that experience. There is a safety side of it, and that is people have been lost, even sometimes you don't hear about it that often, for a couple of hours. But that's enough to freak you out when you're 500k offshore, as we were in, uh, you know, in some of the earlier trips. But uh, teamwork is what gets you the fish, the good fish, and being able to correlate with the team members. For example, on one trip, uh, I was with my son, we had a team on the boat, and we had things that we'd worked out we were gonna do, and we operated as a team, and we got the same amount of doggies for that boat, just that dory, as the rest of the whole crew got. Yeah. And it was just because of our teamwork. Yeah. So if you're willing to, if you want to get doggies, just get with people and, and put people with you on the uh, dory who are willing to be a team member, are willing to go, well, it's his turn to dive. I'm not going to plunge down and try and, you know, snake that doggy, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we all win. And funny enough, he gets the, the, that doggy that pops in and the next thing, another, another one, one pops up. Yeah. So it yeah. works really good. Um, and Reese, I guess, you know, you've done a bit of reef diving and things like that already what do you think you learned from this trip um i definitely learned that i still have a bit of blue water syndrome so i was missing fish for the first probably half day just taking long shots because it's so clear and you it's think so they're clear. close I yeah the fish was smaller than what it was and it was a bit bigger and it was a bit further away yeah um so i had to kind of adjust myself to that for a bit mm -hmm. um other than that it was probably Getting used to being at sea for a long period of time. Yeah. It was kind of a big, big hurdle. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty good, but cool. it all worked out well. And uh, Marcel, what do you think? I, th I guess the, the thing that I love about coral sea trips is Tim Nielsen, the owner of Jenna, he always says that doing a coral sea trip is equivalent to doing one year of boat dives just locally or shore dives because you are, you're diving every day and you're diving so, yeah. for so many hours. And to get that equivalent number of hours in the water, it's actually a lot of time. Um, on land, so I guess you've got another one year of experience in your belt now with that yeah. week trip. So what, what did you learn? I think um, probably the best thing about the trip was the variety of fish and the variety of reef there. So you could dive anywhere. There was lots that were like a metre deep in the North mm. Sea, which was incredible, which I didn't think there would be. Um, and then we did some blue water drifts that were probably 20, 30 metres deep. So the variety of where you can spear and the sort of fish that you can spear is huge and I think that's where you gain all that knowledge and then spearing with guys like Wayne and Reese that have been on thousands of these trips um, really provides a lot of insight into the amount of knowledge that you can gain off those guys. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think you did well by the sharks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... We didn't have a great amount of sharks but we had one particular one that really gave us some courage. It was in our face for quite a while. And uh, Marcel, you hadn't had a lot of experience with sharks then, no. had you? No. Had you ever had you ever seen a shark? I've seen a couple of sharks on shore dives, but um, definitely not as many as I saw on this trip. We <laughs> saw a whole bunch, but surprisingly, most of them were really friendly. They come in, say hello, and kind of swim back off again. So it was a bit of a concern of yours before you went. Obviously, we were showing you lots of footage where people shoot fish, and it's just a ball of sharks. Yeah. Um, but I, I think yeah, I agree. When I've been in the coral sea, they don't really they don't they don't want you. They don't really want to come near you. It's mm. That's your fish. And yeah, <laughs> did anyone yeah. lose any fish to sharks? Yeah, I lost a couple. Yeah, what did you lose? I lost one jobby and one trout. Mm -hmm. the sharks hated underneath me. <laughs> All the rest of the divers kind of freaked out a little bit. Ah, and that's the thing about diving the coral sea as well. I think you, your dive buddies have to be able to kind of fight those sharks off to, to try and land the fish. Yeah, but you also have to have that line, you know, where yeah. it's going, oh, I'm not going to go down there and fight any sharks. <laughs> there's, you know, there's, there's 50. Because there's biting everything. Yeah. You know, and that yeah. would be silly. But, uh, you know, for example, we did have an aggressive large uh, silver tip come in and he was in people's faces all over the show. And at one stage, he did a vertical rise between divers and snatched the teaser, which had a frame hanging on it. Wow. Took the teaser for a bit of everything, but he spat that out and then he went off with the burly. Huh. So, uh, but. Marcel was there and we actually had a bit of a laugh about it and carried on spearing and carried on drifting. And cool. Yeah. Um, can someone tell me a little bit about what a typical day on a charter looks like? So from when you wake up, what's the, what's the drill? So you wake up in the morning, um, 
typically you wake up and breakfast is pretty much set out, ready to go. What, are, what do you have for breakfast? Well, we start with cereal, um, and then you get your hot breakfast, so pancakes, um, French toast, <laughs> bacon and eggs. Two course all breakfast. All the good food, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, then after you finish your breakfast, you pretty much suit up straight away, jump in your wetsuits um, whilst they were getting the dories ready and then you jump into the two dories and split out into our two groups of five. So it's two five metre dories? Yeah. 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 And then you, so you've got groups of five in each and I know from the ones I did it was normally, might be a little bit different when the weather's rough, but normally one of our groups would go to the blue water and one of our groups would go to the shallower reef and it just depended on what you wanted to chase that day. On, on what you um which boat you jumped in so it's, yeah. it's really nice i guess having that those two boats to jump in for options yeah. Yeah. um yeah what happens after that so we then pretty much spear all the way up till lunchtime um it's nice having the boat nearby so that if you did get tired early or you needed to jump out for whatever reason you can always call the boat over sit out for a minute and then jump back in if you want to yeah. um so it's spear up till lunchtime jump back on the dories go back to the mothership have lunch and then do it all again, so jump back in after lunch. And what did, uh, what did your lunches look like? <laughs> lunches and dinners were both great as well. We had hot food for lunch and dinner. Um, what did we have for lunch? Oh, all sorts right. of food. Heaps. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there was like, there's always leftovers. Yeah. Between. Like pies and fish spring rolls and yeah, whole rolls, cooked fish. And burgers. <laughs> yeah, fish fish curry. curry. Was it yeah. fish curry? Yeah. Yeah, they definitely, they, they provide us at two hostesses and they kind of do all your cooking and do a bit of, you know, like cleaning up after you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Steph, Steph, she was the cook for us and she is yeah. inventive and she, she said she'd be pro pro proposed to a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Way to a man's stomach, his heart through his stomach, there's no doubt about it. But she kept us very happy. Always something interesting, never yeah. boring. Yeah, yeah, I've been out with Steph before, she's baked us cakes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we had a birthday, two birthdays, a 30th and a 20th out there within two days. So wow. There was a big cake covered in tin <laughs> tans and chocolates. And we had a bit of a celebration on it. That's oh, good. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, what happens after, after lunch? So, after lunch, we jumped back in the water um, and same deal. We'd usually, for the first few days, we were diving either blue water in the morning and then shallow reef in the afternoon or the opposite. So that's a kind of chance to reassess either move locations if you're not doing so well um, or change attack a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and then we dive all through the afternoon right up until almost dark, 5, 5.30, um, jump back on the boat, head back to the, the mothership and then sort yourself yeah. out, have a shower, clean up all your fish um, and have dinner. Yeah, cool. Um, I know when we were out there, it was like dinner on that top deck and you're kind of like out in the open looking around the ocean, that a few beers. Bedroom. Is your beer the bedroom? <laughs> yeah. I think she had a pretty good time. <laughs> you know, no, we couldn't. We would have been blown off the top deck. Most of the time it was 30 knots. Oh, yeah, no, we didn't have that. <laughs> um, what would you guys recommend to anyone who's, I guess, thinking about going on a charter trip, you know, if they had you know, concerns about their experience levels or they, you know, they want to do it, but they're not quite sure, I guess, yeah, what would, what would your recommendations be to those people? I think first, get with someone who's done them and has got fish on them mm. and go over it. These people, they've got the experience they need. It's all mm. about who you dive with, you know? Mm. So if people go up there and they've got no experience, they will just do terrible. Mm. But if you've got someone there who's done the, done the, the walk, he's walked the walk, mm. uh, just get the right gear. Don't compromise about the gear. Probably the if you if you had the uh, if you try and go with you know gear that isn't good enough, and you're trying to just sort of go hope it does it. Well, it's probably not going to be good enough. Mm. But this is the top level of, of spearfishing gear, you know, blue water. It's going to be tried out hard. It's going to be tried out there. Mm. So you know, work it out so you get the good gear, good information, and. Uh, Probably also need to get a bit fit too, you know. Unless you're actually diving very regularly. I mean, Brisbane for, Brisbane Spiros are the, probably some of the hardest divers I've come across. So, someone who's diving regularly off Brisbane will probably do okay, as mm. long as they can handle the every day you're out there doing, you know, between five and six hours in the water. You know? Yep, yep. And what about you guys? What would you, I guess, recommend to anyone who's thinking about giving it a go? Um, I'd probably recommend making sure you take gear that you're familiar with. Mm. Um, I would hate to go out there and try and test gear out. It's mm -hmm. just, it becomes a pain. You end up losing a lot of fish and you're still trying to 
like guns and stuff, you'll still try and aim them in while you're out there for a few days. That's such great advice, Reese. I've definitely been on trips where guys will go and buy, you know, like going off what Wayne has said and they'll go, yep, I need the biggest and the best gun. They'll buy a brand new blue water gun, spend three grand and they go out there and they miss fish for three days and they go back to their 1.3 because yeah. they didn't use it. So yeah, that's, that's awesome advice, definitely. Mm. And rigging, I take spare rigging gear. There's a lot of times where you get lots of nicks in your rigging lines and stuff. Yeah. Definitely rigging gear. Brody, uh, Brody's just asked, what sort of depths do you need to be comfortable diving to go there and, and have a good time? Well, my dory that I was diving in, we dove anywhere from jumped out of the boat and nearly axed yourself on the reef. <laughs> really shallow, <laughs> from, from you mean? Shallow, yeah, <laughs> to probably depths up to 30. I think the deepest dive I did was 24. Yeah. And I was trying to get a shaft out of the coral, but yeah. that was about it. Yeah. So we didn't really dive any deeper than that. And, if we did, it'd probably be more for reef fish anyway. So yeah, yeah. I guess Marcel, you probably would have been the the newest diver there. So what kind of depths were you used to, and how did you find your diving experience? To, yeah, to I don't think um, if you're concerned about diving too shallow, I don't think you should be concerned. Mm. I'm a pretty shallow water diver, um, and coming from diving on the Sunshine Coast here on shore dives, in like diving eight meters water most of the time, to diving in the Coral Sea was fine. Even just up to like 15 meters is still fine. Um, there's the opportunity to dive really shallow water, like Reese said. You can dive in like three, four meters water if you really want to. Yeah. But you can also push out a little bit wider and start diving that deep water. So it's a good opportunity in super clear water as well to kind of um, not push yourself so much, but Advanced. see how yeah. build on the skills that you've already got and see how far you can go. Yeah. Cool, awesome. Thanks for that question, Brody. And uh, Peter's just asked, when's the next trip? I wish I stayed up. <laughs> um, <laughs> October, yeah. So we've got a trip running in October. Um, I'll pop a link in the comments here to give everyone the, the heads up on those dates. And then we've got a couple of Tonga trips as well. So yeah, if anyone wants to join us on a 2016 or 2017 Coral Sea trip, it's 2,500 per person. Uh, that includes everything. Your diving, your, obviously your accommodation and food on the boat. Um, you've just got to pay for your flights, get yourself there. Uh, we get there by lunchtime on the day before. Lunchtime the day before. Um, oh, day. oh, the day you leave. Yeah, you leave that night. Uh, yeah, and and that's about it. It's all you have to do when you join Adreno on these trips because Adreno uh, covers all of the deposit costs and things like that. So, um, all righty. Thanks for that, guys. Uh, if you don't have any other things to let people know, we'll uh, tune out. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. See you there.